in some ways, what we've learned with these discussions is the more you focus them, the better they are. So if they're too broad, you kind of... But I know, I mean, uh, in Eve's group, there was um, uh, work that was, that was done around uh, renewable energy, and I'll, I'll come back to the question on it. But I think, Mike, we're going to have a separate event, aren't we, too, on the environment as well and climate change. So we will pick up, uh, pick up uh, that. I mean, I do want to look at, you know, where, where can we become self-sufficient, carbon neutral? You know, waste is, we are not currently dealing with all of our waste within Greater Manchester. And I think we should set that as one of our, one of our objectives. Um, renewable energy, a massive agenda to be grabbed there, which is also about new jobs of the future, which I think we need to... To get into too, but we will have. We promise you, we'll have a set. And there's this presumption against fracking, which uh, you know I'm, I'm very, um, which might make some vested interests not keen on uh, my candidacy. But still, I'm very serious about it because I've looked into it in Lee. If I can't support it in Lee, I'm not going to recommend it to anywhere else in Greater Manchester. And uh, yeah, I'll be sticking very firmly to that position through the through the campaign. Uh, in terms of the city of trees, I mean. I the team, Kevin, my campaign director, Kevin, I don't know if everyone probably knows who you are, but just put you, <laughs> yeah. you have met the City of Trees, have you not? Yeah. Uh, we are very, very supportive of what they're trying to do. It's a brilliant initiative. I, I wasn't quite aware of that target, but um, maybe you did, maybe Kevin did mention it to me. Um, but it sounds very interesting, you know, and I think Manchester does need to green up a bit. Um, so, you know, let's, let's see if we can do something with that. But I think the City of Trees idea is a... Uh, uh, is a really interesting one. In Worsley, they're bringing through the Garden City, aren't they? The um, um, uh, the Chelsea, what's, what's the Royal Botanical Society? You know, so there's a big initiative going on on there. So there's there's things happening that we could uh, we could build on. Renewable energy, absolutely. If I understand what the combined authority have done, they put on hold this idea of a green energy company. But I don't think it's abandoned, actually. I think it's just simply it's, it's, it's on hold for now. So there is something for me to inherit there. But I'm, no, I'm very, very... Ah, great, in terms of our bigger vision, <laughs> Greater Manchester's got to be the industrial capital again of the country. And we need to grab renewable energy and say, well, we'll, we'll make... Nowhere else in the country has kind of said, we're going to be the leaders. Well, we, we need to. We, need, yeah. we should grab it. And I think you will do that if you create those public-private uh, partnerships. And I think... A, a company could be a really important part of that. But I would link it to council housing and social housing, the need to build more, because we need to build those as energy self-sufficient. Uh, and what I want to do is then linking it back to young people again is say, well, we need to have better technical education uh, for young people so that they can build those council and social houses of the future with those renewable energy schemes that built in. We can follow the German model where the big six have been seriously challenged by um, community-generated uh, uh, energy energy schemes, and I think that is absolutely uh, something that we should um, we should be see we should seek to be doing. So, you know, I'll talk further with you. Maybe that's a theme that we can pick up in the um, in the, the environment um, uh, event that we're going to do. The last um, uh, couple of points was um, was the. Um, the bikeability point wasn't there, yeah. And was there another one I missed? Yeah. Was it housing? Um, urban living. What was the urban living part? Density. Density. Oh, so, yeah. Sorry, look, the, the, the the flats yeah. outside. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> a bit of a <laughs> bit of a blank there. Well, this I think is a challenge for this spatial framework that's coming through. You know, I, I think we need to consider what you just said in the context of that which is putting people where the growth in housing is sustainable. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, they aren't, we aren't building houses for car users, which you could argue could be a flaw in the current approach in the spatial framework. Mm -hmm. What we should instead be doing is building... I don't resile from the numbers of houses that they're setting as a, as a city mm -hmm. region. I think it's around 11,000 a year. Now, it's a lot, but I don't resolve from it. But, it's a very different thing to build 11,000 double garage properties than it is to build 11,000 more affordable properties or a mixture of the two. And I think this is where we've got to listen to the consultation. But as you say, we need a bigger gender in Greater Manchester, I think, around not just the city centre, but our town centres that are outlying the city centre. And Debbie jumps in because of, you know, people in Oldham will feel this very strongly. I don't think we have applied our minds to those places yet as, as really pleasant places to live. 
as retail habits have changed and people have moved to the internet, mm -hmm. places like Lee and Oldham have been left with lots of redundant retail space. Mm -hmm. And it tends just to get filled by a whole hodgepodge of uses that don't much inspire people and charity mm -hmm. shops, etc. And all in favour of charity shops, but not loads and loads of them when, you know, that, that kind of make places feel very, uh, can make them feel quite depressed. I think the next phase of Greater Manchester is to say, okay, the city centre has improved, but what about Wigan, Lee, Bolton, Bury, Oldham, Rochdale, Ashton, you know, going round the perimeter? And actually, you know, going back to the living streets or the healthy streets agenda, saying, well, why don't we knock down some of this, this redundant retail space? Why don't we put in more greener spaces? Why don't we put more flats, high density flat developments in some of our town centres and really make them attractive places to live? That are also linked to the transport, the public transport network to get them into the to the city centre. So, you know, thanks for reminding me because it's a really important, yeah. uh, a really important point. And then on the last point, I'll finish on this point because it's a really important one. Our aim should be together to say, let's make this the best place in the country to grow up. Yes. That's <laughs> what we should be doing. Yeah. So, what does that mean? It means when all kids are four at reception class age, they arrive at school ready to learn. At the moment, in parts of Greater Manchester, 70% of kids arrive in reception class without the basic language and social skills to enable them to start learning and thriving straight away. That causes the inequality, because those kids never catch up. And I think we've got to have a big focus on those early years, the 0 to 4, and put investment in there, particularly those kids who've got special needs or complex needs and we need that extra support for them. When it gets to school, primary school now, okay, the mayor doesn't have responsibility here, but we have an ability to coordinate. It is, we've got to stop our schools becoming exam factories as this government is basically making them, you know, the SATs and all the pressure of GCSEs and all the rest of it. It should be a basic entitlement for kids in Greater Manchester to, to learn how to swim, to learn how to ride a bike, to maybe do that thing they do elsewhere, the daily mile, you know, so there's a, a mile of exercise before school every day. Could we do that by investing in the school infrastructure, the playgrounds? We should look at that. Learning a musical instrument, again, how do we fund it? I don't know, but we should make that our goal and we should try and get sponsors to support us. And then you get, and so that's why you don't just, just do things for older kids. And then you get to 16 to 18. And my idea there is, a UCAS style system for apprenticeships. So, you know, hopefully some of these apprenticeships in green energy or you have a single place for all apprenticeships in Greater Manchester so that kids can see everything that's available across the city region. And because crucially they've got that free bus pass, they know at age 13 or 14, well, I'd like to do that apprenticeship. I'm going to apply for it like I would a university place. And I know I can pay for myself to get to that apprenticeship because I'm going to get that bus pass. That's where this vision starts to come together a bit, really, you know, and starts to make sense but that would be the, the dream wouldn't it the best place uh, to grow up and there's no point in doing this unless we're going to aim high is it Absolutely. we may as well set some big ambitions for ourselves at the start of this process it's certainly what i'm doing in in standing and um, I'm putting all my energy into into making this a success so it's just a huge thanks to you particularly to eve and chris and others uh, who've helped convene uh, today and a thanks to you uh, debbie as well but um, you know in the end, what this is all about, this devolution drive, it will be what we choose to make it. If we all hold back from it and be cynical about it, well, it maybe won't amount to very much. If we together, as the people of Greater Manchester say, right, do you know what? We're going to make this a moment of real change. We're going to grab what we've been given here and we're going to use it to change our city region, involve more people in politics, change the, the political culture, as Eve said, you know, really kind of uh, give people the sense that they're in control and they've got more power. I think we've got to do that with the way politics is going because it's becoming more hate-filled and unpleasant by the, by the month at the moment. We've got to say that this place is going to be different, beacon of social justice to the rest. That's what we want it to be, and that's what you're going to help me make it be. Thank you very much. Thank you.